and this is my soon-to-be son-in-law, Avery, and we both love to cook, but we know there's a lot of people out there who are uncomfortable in the kitchen. They're confused about how to cook healthy food. They think they don't have enough time to cook, so they don't sit down to the table and share a meal with family and friends, and they end up picking up unhealthy food on the run. Well, we are here to change all of that. We're going to show you how to cook quick, healthy, everyday food so that you can be confident in the kitchen and have more memories around the table with the people that you love. You've got this, so let's get started. Okay, please listen and pay attention to this because this can be one of the biggest game changers when it comes to healthy cooking. Because most of the time people say, I don't have time or you're just not prepared, you don't have the ingredients at home so you stop on the way home and get something unhealthy. Don't you think a plan is so important when it comes to healthy eating? It was probably the number one reason I wasn't losing weight or I was exercising a lot, but it would always come down to I don't have time, I don't want to deal with it, get something fast. Yeah, Avery used to be 40 pounds, yeah. 40 pounds heavier than he is now. So I'm telling you, he's speaking from experience. He used to stop through the old fast food place one too many times, <laughs> and he didn't have a plan in place. Okay, he was in college, I'm cutting him some slack. But we're going to walk you through how to make three days worth of food in so little time, guys. It would literally take you less time to do this than it would to go and pick up food and drive through and order food and all of that. So the key with doing a three-day menu plan is to prep in advance, okay? And I want you to know that we have other menu plans, five-day menu plans, three-day, all at our website, faithfulworkouts.com or you can go to thefreshtable.org. When you look at either one of those websites, you can sign up for our Faithful and Fit plan and in there, hundreds of recipes, hundreds of exercise videos, and so many resources to grow in your faith. We have a 40-day reading plan. We have a restart plan that has nothing to do about exercise and eating and all about breaking free from strongholds. So I want you to know that. This is critical. This is a great thing we're going to show you. Some of the work we did in advance just because we wanted to fit it all into this program and make sure you understood what we were doing. So here's what you would do. You would take one red pepper, one zucchini, one onion, and about a cup of carrots, okay? So, because carrots come in a lot of different sizes. And all we did was we diced them up into little pieces, because when you cut, dice them up into little pieces, they'll cook faster. So let's say you're gonna start your healthy plan on a Monday. On Sunday, you would do all that. You would cut them up, put them onto a cookie sheet with one tablespoon of olive oil, and toss them. You'd have your oven preheated to 400 degrees. Okay, you with me so far? So we take all those vegetables, we put them in the oven, cook them for about 30 minutes. While they're cooking, you're gonna take a sweet potato and two potatoes and put them in the oven. Just put them in the oven whole once it's preheated and you'll cook those, depending on the size of them, 30 to 45 minutes, okay? All right, next thing you do is you pound of ground beef or a lean Italian sausage. Check though, if you're getting Italian sausage, make sure there aren't nitrates. Look at the ingredients. Make it a nice, healthy Italian sausage. All right, so you've got a half pound. I would just cook it right on the stove, kind of chop at it a little bit while you're going, and cook that. Then you cook two cups of quinoa. In order to, cup two, to, to cook two cups of quinoa, it's about one cup of uncooked quinoa with two cups of water. But look at the package when you buy your quinoa, look what it says, and you make that quinoa. Okay, so that's all prepped in advance. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to make a mustard basil vinaigrette. This is really easy, okay? So I take a little container, something that will put in your refrigerator easy, you can cover with some saran wrap so that you have it throughout the week. So I have right here a half a teaspoon of dried basil, I have three tablespoons balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of olive oil, and you're gonna use these on your different salads throughout the week, okay? So you can make enough for the week. That's a good rule of thumb too, when you're making your own salad dressings. If you're not gonna do anything else, at least start making some of your own condiments or sides because that's where they sneak in a lot of sugar. Uh, with this, no sugar, it's okay. just equal parts vinegar and oil 
you can put in a blender, you're gonna start with a fork, it's so easy. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in just one teaspoon of Dijon mustard here, okay? I give it a nice stir, salt and pepper, Avery will yeah. salt and pepper me right here. And now you have enough salad dressing for this the next three days, okay? So do a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Yeah, fresh cracked pepper, so yeah. good. Okay, so that's all you do for your prep work. So you do that on Sunday, and it should take you an hour at most. That's your biggest day. Once this is done, every day moving forward is gonna be so fast. All right, so we're gonna start now on day one, and Avery's gonna walk you through how do you make your breakfast. All right, so we're gonna make a simple, easy, delicious omelet. So nice. It's gonna have quinoa and then our roasted vegetables together in it, a little salt and pepper, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, so let's crack these eggs. First, of course, a hot pan. We wanna have that going. Eggs, it's a good rule of thumb to cook kinda of low and slow. Another rule, if it's done in the pan, it is overdone on your plate. Mm -hmm. So always make sure to take it out just a second early. It'll be much better, especially if you're gonna eat it the next day. Great, so we get that pan turned on. And we put, well, I'll put some olive oil in it for you. Yeah, that's great. So we'll so put I'm one tablespoon of olive, you get on those. You just wanna make sure you kinda of cover that whole bottom. About one tablespoon of olive oil there. It's a good idea to have fresh eggs if you've never had like really farm fresh eggs where it's like the orange yolk. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you should treat yourself to that. Uh, get your own chickens, make a friend with a farmer, do whatever you have to do, it makes all the difference. Yeah, it was so fun. The other day I literally was driving down my road and at the end of my road was a cooler and it said fresh free range eggs. And I guess someone just on the road right above me has chickens and they were just on the honor system that you would put your money into the cooler and take your eggs out. I thought that was about the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> I'm easy to please, I guess. But no, it was really like, whoa, this is so fun to get, be able to get some real fresh eggs. All right, so to this, you can put this in the pan or you can just kind of mix it in right now. Uh, let's get one cup of these. Right in now. Yeah, one cup of the roasted vegetables. Look good. Maybe a little bit more, yeah. Let's get about one fourth of that. So we got one cup of that, and then we're gonna get a half a cup of our quinoa. Okay, I'm telling you, if, if you've watched um, the show before, you know that I'm into quinoa. I put it in a lot of things because it's so good for you. It gives you sustained energy. Vegetables have so many nutrients. Eggs have protein. And it's just a quick way. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that started. So if it's day one, we're actually making, you might say, well, that's a big breakfast. You're actually making enough of an omelet for two days. And you might think, oh, I don't wanna eat the same breakfast for two days. Come on, they ate manna for 40 years. They're okay with two days of the same thing. All right, so he's gonna go ahead and keep that cooking there and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to showing you the lunch for day two. This is really easy. All I have here is three cups of chicken stock. You could also use a vegetable stock either way. So I've got that and you can get those nice little boxes or something and just kind of pour that into it. In addition, I'm gonna take one cup of milk. You could use an almond milk. I wouldn't really use a coconut milk though, okay? So I'm gonna put one cup of milk in there. Then those two potatoes you cooked earlier, we're just gonna give them a nice, oops, a nice little thin, thin, go. just a real thin slice yeah. on those. And because we've already cooked them um, in the oven, you don't have to worry about cooking them in the pan. They're already cooked. And then the last thing that is the main thing is we're gonna put kale. Okay, if you haven't cooked with kale, it is great for you. We're adding six cups, and that might seem like a lot of kale, but it really wilts down, so you're not gonna have that much. So we're adding in all of that. Yeah. Yep. And then, what I wanna show you is, in kale, if you've ever heard, it has a rib. This is the rib, and it can be kinda of tough. So all you have to do when you're cutting up your kale, fold it in half right by the rib, take your knife here, and just kinda of cut the rib right out. Not that it's like gonna hurt you if you eat it or something, it's just a little bit makes it kind of tough. And then you can kind of roll up that kale and just slice it up like that. And all you do then is really warm the broth and the milk, add a little salt and pepper, and you have some great soup. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna get that going and yeah. you can move on to the fish. So a little Italian sausage or ground beef is totally optional right there. Uh, that soup's really nice. If you add some hot sauce, I usually add something like that at the end. 
Uh, there's a couple restaurants that have kind of like a Tuscan style soup like that. It's really, really good. Soup, super easy way uh, to just have a really fast meal and something that it reheats really, really nicely. Okay, cool. So for our next dish, we're gonna go with a piece of fish that we're gonna have with some sweet potato and a salad. So this is lunch. This is gonna be really, really nice. I'm gonna have fish the next day too, so I can go ahead and cook both pieces. Uh, that'll allow me to just reheat it when I'm making my tacos for the next day. Okay, one thing I forgot, so I have to just wait a second. I forgot to put the meat into the soup. And again, you can use ground beef. I actually like better for this whole menu plan to use Italian sausage. So I'm putting in one cup of ground beef into the soup. All right, then we're gonna get started with our fish, which is gonna be our dinner for this first night. It is gonna be really, really, really nice. We're gonna cook it uh, really plain and simple because we're gonna add different sauces and stuff like that at the end. So let's get started with a hot pan. Of course, as always, we're going good. And then a little oil or butter down. I really recommend you use extra virgin olive oil if you're used to using butter a lot. It's fine, there's some dishes you can't really substitute, but most of the time, get a really good oil. Uh, most of us, uh, especially in America, we kind of only use extra virgin olive oil. I mean, maybe 5% of people might use like more coconut oil or avocado oil. A lot of people like use that. canola and vegetable oils yeah. and they think that they're healthy, but guys, if I was you, try to stay away from those. Canola oil is um, not really as healthy. It has typically, it's almost 95% GMO. That's something that I choose to try really to avoid and I encourage you to do the same. So really sticking with um, olive oil, avocado oil is wonderful. Um, your, you know, coconut oils. Um, olive oil isn't ideal for high heat, but it's not bad either. So you could uh, e easily switch out and use an avocado oil here if you'd prefer. So. So this is fresh tilapia. Try to get fresh fish, not farm raised. They're coming along with farm raised fish, making it a little better, but most of the time, it's better to avoid. <laughs> yeah, there are some fish that they're actually now farming in the ocean where they're setting off an area within the water and, and letting the fish be in their natural habitat. I always try to go for wild caught and you can use any fish you want in this. If you love salmon, um, grouper, whatever is your favorite fish, do it. Okay? And one of the great things about cooking fish, it's only about four minutes on each side. Okay? So, everything going good over there? Flip the omelet, mostly made it, so we're good. good. I'm gonna wash my hands really quick and then we'll keep going. Okay, great, so what we're gonna do now is we've got our omelets just about done, so we're gonna take that off. The soup should be done in just a couple minutes, and then we have the fish that we'll be able to show you in a little bit. One other thing that is helpful in the prep area is to have some grape tomatoes and some cucumbers. You could prep, prep them the day before if you want, enough to make just about two salads with, okay? And the other thing that can save us so much time in the kitchen is now we can buy so many of our lettuces pre-washed and in a bag. So I do encourage you to try to get that unless you have the time and you want to put it into washing and cutting up the lettuce. But those pre-washed bag lettuces, super good. Try to get organic um, as always. Yeah. So I'll get the plate ready for your dinner with the salad yeah, and while that fish is going on. So you can go, this is really, so we've got about a cup of lettuce here that we're going to put over here. Okay. And then I'm going to use only part of my tomatoes and cucumbers. So about half Spread of that. This. And about half this. So you can see we're just getting a nice little salad going here that's taking us just minutes. And then we're going to take and um, cut that potato. Okay, so we just take that and we can, what I like to do on a potato is actually to put a little olive oil and cinnamon on it. And here's the funny thing, so often we're, we try to avoid fat too much. Fat is not what is hurting us. And if you put fat on a sweet potato or a regular potato, that fat, slows down the digestion of the food, so it actually lowers what they call the glycemic index, or lowers how fast your body's taking it in, so you don't get the insulin spikes. I know some of you might be like, that's more information than I need, but I wanted you to know, don't be afraid, put a little olive oil, a little cinnamon on it, and then we'll have that fish off to the side. How's that omelet? You ready to oh show them? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. So, this is even bigger than the dish. Is, is, I mean, it's pretty substantial breakfast. Again, you're having this the next day as well. Sprinkle this with a little fresh herbs, 
Um, you know, salsa, this is yeah, part, of, yeah. part of your menu plan. We have a grocery list and everything for you as well. Even just a little pre-made salsa and a little bit of yogurt on top. Oh, make, it makes it so good. Yeah. All right, let me get a ladle here and get out some soup. Okay, so this, again, really, really nice. Uh, and it may seem like, oh, this is a lot of work. We're doing so much. Uh, but if you buy the things ahead of time, you prep that one day, the rest of the week is so much easier. This is, like I said, the number one thing that was killing me with my diet exercise. I exercised so much. I felt great in every other area, but I wouldn't make time. And when I didn't have time, I just made something kind of nasty and quick, or I'd go out uh, and spend the extra money to do that. So please, please, please relax in the kitchen. You got this. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, and we're going to make some more great food. So here's our breakfast. Yep. I'm going to go flip the fish. Again, with fish, season one side. Put that side down in the pan so that you can season the other. Let's go do that right now. So we're, we're trying to show you all the days here. So we have got the breakfast day one. Lunch is just about done. We're still waiting for that kale to wilt a little bit more and get hot. And I'll put that into a bowl. On our website, when you look at the ingredients and all the information, what's really I love about this three-day menu plan is we base the quantities off of one person. So all you have to do, if you have a family of four, just multiply it by four. My um, mother-in-law, who is just awesome, um, has been doing our three-day menu plans, and she said it's so easy for her. Um, sadly, not too long ago, her husband, my father-in-law, died, and she was concerned, like, how am I going to cook for one? And I, when she told me that these menu plans are making a difference in her life, I'm like, I'm so glad I did it if she's the only one who did it. Because a lot of the times, we find ourselves all of a sudden alone, right? If you're a single parent and your kid gets off to school or there's divorce, there's a death, you're on your own. And it's, it's really challenging to cook for one. So my hope is that these menu plans really do make it easier if you are cooking just for yourself. All right, so while everything's going, let's go on to day two. Yep. And like we know, the, the day two is the other half of our omelet. And then we have a beautiful quinoa salad that Avery's going to show you how to make. And then the other half of your sweet potato. So let's go on to that. Again, so it looks like we're cooking a lot. But remember, this is spread out over three days. Uh, so you have that one prep day, and then you've got three days of food. Uh, so again, we're cooking a lot because we're cooking three days of food right now. Uh, but definitely don't feel stressed out or anything like that. So, I've got my little quinoa bowl, so I'm just going to make a quick little salad in here. So I've got about a cup and a half of quinoa. To that, I'm going to add some chopped zucchini that I did not roast. You could, if you had a little extra of the roasted, definitely put that in there. Let's say um, about a third of a cup. I forgot to mention that on the prep day, when you're making all your vegetables to roast, keep aside some of the zucchini, some of the red pepper, so that it's fresh and ready to go. It's a third a cup of each you want to hold off to the side for the salad. And then we have so some. So there's red pepper, and then we got carrots, salt and pepper, of course, and that's the taste. I like a little more salt and a little more pepper. That's totally up to you. And then some of our salad dressing. Uh, that's going to go on the first day. We're also going to add in there, so let me stir this around. That's looking good. Mm. I tell you, that with a half a sweet potato is going to last you, keep you nice and full for a while. But the only item that we're cooking extra of is the soup that I showed you how to make for lunch. It's an awesome snack, and I'm all about snacks. Like, sometimes we eat more than we should because we think, oh my goodness, I have to wait four hours to my next meal. I'm going to get too hungry. All right, so I added in, what do you think, about a tablespoon or two? Yeah, a tablespoon probably. Yeah, that's all we need for this little quinoa salad. So again, I'm going to serve that with a half a sweet potato, a little salt and pepper. So nice, so good. If you, if you cook it right in the oven, it's going to be really nice and creamy, really delicious. I think you're really going to like it. So yeah, let's put out this fish. Let's show you that soup, and let's keep going with our days. Yeah, I mean, look at this meal. We'll put a little bit of dressing on that salad, yeah, and then cool. that's, that one's ready to go. OK, let me get see if that soup is done. Just another minute or two there. So we'll go on to then 
dinner, right? Yes. Dinner day two. We are moving through it, right? So this one is going to be great. We're making a fish taco. And so, Avery, if you want to go ahead and get that fish in, inside that Whoops. shell for me. And then, um, I love sauces. I think sauces can make such a difference when we're eating and make things so much just more flavorful. So what I have here is two tablespoons of plain yogurt. I like the Greek yogurt. It's a little bit thicker, so it works better for a sauce. Then I'm going to take just about a teaspoon of lime juice, fresh lime, if possible, squeeze that in there. Gives it such a nice kind of citrusy taste. And then we've got some fresh dill, okay? So I take a little dill. You could use dry dill as well and just dice it up a little bit. Put that in there. I'm going to say about a teaspoon, okay, of fresh if you're using dried, more like a quarter of a teaspoon, just a little bit, okay? We'll give this a little stir and then, good, got that. And then in addition, we're going to put in some of our roasted vegetables so that we have a nice kind of full thing here. So mm, that's amazing. Go, yeah, go ahead and put a little bit of that on there and then I'll put some of the vegetables on. There's that little vegetable. So you get almost like a full meal right here, right? There we go. You can use all that if you need to. Okay, so I'm putting about a half a cup of vegetables right onto that um, taco. And then we want some avocado. Yes. Yeah, some good avocado. So with an avocado, did you know if you keep the seed in, it will keep it from getting brown? So if I'm only going to use half of it, I want to come around like that, hold the sides, give it a little twist. Now keep the pit in it, and then we'll keep that from browning too much. Then I come here and I slice it up. Avocado is so good for you. It's just a great healthy fat. So you see I sliced it into little pieces, skin on, and then you can really just kind of come in here and, Avery, why don't you take all that off for, and just put a couple slices inside that. Or you can also use a knife. I guess I could make it easy and go. do this. How's that looking for a meal? And then in our menu plan, you can have tortilla chips and salsa with this. So it's a really just a full meal. You've got your um, great fish taco there and Sounds everything like a else. It's huge. Yeah, it's a real big one. So that is day two. Now let me go get that soup that I'm sure is ready now from day one. Oh yeah, it's bubbling now. Okay, let me put this down yeah, over it's here. Be so good. Uh, I say the true test of a chef is ability to make soups because they're so malleable. So if you're scared or, or you don't really want to be in the kitchen or you've never really cooked before, try making soups because with soup, uh, you can change it really quickly. If it's too salty or anything like that, you just add more broth or more water. Uh, and then you can really start to experiment and make some really amazing soups. Whether they're chicken stock based or cream based, it's so good and it's so good for you. And because it is cheaper, and you can make it ahead of time. That's what I've started doing really. Sunday, make a big pot of soup, then I can change it throughout the rest of the week. Maybe add a little hot sauce, or maybe a little of this, or a little of that, as far as like different kinds of meats or veggies. I can put different herbs on top to change the flavor, um, and it's all so, so good. Yeah, let's go ahead and put the other half of the omelet right on that for day two. So you can see it all laying out here. And we've got, so day two, we've got the fish taco, the tortilla chips and salsa we don't have, but just picked from there. We've got your quinoa salad. And now we're going to go on to day three. And one of my favorite things is avocado toast. So Avery, we can tell, you can go ahead and either toast it in the oven, or toast it in the toaster, or what's really fun is you can put a little olive oil in a pan, get it nice and crispy, and yeah. then put some avocado. So when that- Just kind of smear it on there, whatever you like. Okay. And now for lunch on day two, this is really fast, guys. Day three. Day three. Day three. Sorry. All right. I have some broth here, two cups of broth, and to it, I'm going to add one cup of roasted vegetables. Okay. Just like that. And then- Quinoa again, half cup, Ooh. just a little bit of quinoa, just to give it a little bit more. Literally, that is your soup for day two. Three. Three. Doesn't get any easier than that, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and show dinner because I've actually already put it together here. But I'm going to tell you, all that you do is you take a pepper and you cut off the top. You have a nice big opening. I would mix my leftover ground beef, quinoa, and some peas. And I like to add a little salsa. And I mix that all together, 
put it inside the pepper, put it in the oven that's preheated at about 375, and cook for about 25 minutes. You just want to be sure that it stays kind of upright there. So here we go for day three over there. Here's our day two. So there it is, guys. Um, let's show that avocado toast. Yeah, here it is. And here's the soup. I'll get that into a bowl and we're done. All right, so you can kind of mash it, make more like a guacamole, or just put the slices on there. I've seen lots of people kind of like grate, or like you grate cheese, you can grate a hard boiled egg, and that's really, really nice on there as well. Uh, let's get this out with my... I would say, honestly, avocado toast is one of my favorite, favorite lunch at breakfast. I get uh, snacks anytime at all. Okay, so there's that, and we've got our avocado toast coming, and... Pretty it up a little bit. There we go. So just to recap, you've got your half an omelet, your soup, your fish, sweet potato salad. Again, an omelet, a quinoa salad, a fish taco with avocado and roasted vegetables, and then avocado toast, a roasted vegetable quinoa soup, and then a stuffed pepper. Okay? On one of our menu plans, we even have a fudgesicle that's homemade that you can have every night afterwards, and it's so yummy, but you'll have to join Faithful and Fit Plan at FaithfulWorkouts.com. So we just made three days of food. Yeah, that's there we go. Good. Right here, man. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of The Fresh Table. I hope you learned a lot about healthy cooking. And you can tell by the fact that I'm doing a cooking show that I believe it's important to eat healthy. But really, there's a verse in Jeremiah 15, 16 that I think is so important that we really listen to. Jeremiah says, when your words came to me, I ate them and they brought me joy and that they brought delight to my heart. And it's so important that we remember that when we're trying to move towards better health and we're tr trying to supply our body with nutrition, there is nothing more important than the words of God. Jeremiah doesn't say your words came to me and I licked it or I tasted it and spit it out. He says I ate them. When you eat something, it comes into your body and it goes throughout your entire body. So remember, moving towards better health Yes, I want you to eat healthy, but even more so, I want you to focus on the words of God. When you go to your Bible, believe that they are going to change you, that you're going to devour those words. It's our soul is what really needs to be fed on a daily basis, not just our, our body. Our soul needs to be fed. And so often what our soul really longs for is peace. And I love, and, and it's in Hebrews, I believe, 6, where it says, you're an anchor to my soul, God. You are an anchor. And when you think about an anchor, it's just embedded down into the bottom of the water and all this can toss and turn, but you can't get off course. So just guys, remember to turn to God, eat his words, let them come into your body, believe that they're going to change you. Because if you do that, you will have peace for your soul and you'll have health for your body. Thanks. And I hope to see you next time on The Fresh Table.